God made Jesus Lord and Christ. Good morning and welcome to our vlog from St. Mark's Episcopal in Dalton and welcome to those on Facebook and uh, YouTube to join us this morning. Uh, we're in the season of Pentecost, what some people derisively call ordinary time, but what I want to suggest is we consider that uh, another way of looking at, at Pentecost this morning. You know, I've been around many Christians over the years who have said you know, how wonderful it would have been to have been alive and been around when Jesus was uh, uh, in his ministry been with him in Galilee walking around and to you know, listen to him speak and to observe his witness his miracles and just be in his presence and you know that would be wonderful probably most of us if we could ha have to get around the uh, you know the lack of air conditioning and the language barrier and that there were no modern restrooms but you know I understand what people are saying with that and we do that so imagine what it would have been like to be in Jesus presence to hear him speak and and to be invited and participate in the Last Supper uh, how nice it would have been to be part of the washing of the feet and to be with Jesus after the resurrection when he uh, you know interacted with the disciples but uh, and that would that would have been great surely of us if have we been there we would have been uh, followers of Jesus We've, we would have been believers we would not have had any doubts but the Bible teaches us that even some of the disciples, not just Thomas, but several of the disciples had doubts. Uh, in Matthew 28, it says that even after the disciples were in, had been interacting with Jesus and were with him, uh, some still doubted. You know, they were having a hard time because they knew Jesus as a person. Now, they knew the man Jesus, and they were having a hard time accepting that Jesus you know, was the Christ, the chosen one. So, you know, and that would have been hard to understand, but they did that. So, uh, you know, uh, so that was sort of the idea. It wasn't, it's something we can accept today that, you know, it, it wasn't as clear cut as, as maybe we would think it would have been. Well, let's fast forward though, to the first day of Pentecost, uh, you know, uh, 50 days after the resurrection, uh, as described in the second chapter of Acts, it says, now, now we're in the season of Pentecost right now, which people call ordinary time. But, um, you know, and I understand that it's not as popular or as, you know, well con considered as Christmas and Easter. You know, it's very hard to have to, have to consider the uh, miracle of the incarnation at Christmas, the miracle of the resurrection at Easter. Um, you know, these were miracles that changed the world, no doubt about it, but we don't really consider Pentecost. But, um, now let's consider that what really happened that morning of Pentecost, right after the Holy Spirit came into the disciples. It says the Bible teaches us that there were uh, many Jews that from uh, in the temple. They are uh, not just ones from around Judea or Galilee, the local Jews, but they come from many foreign lands. And they were there for the uh, Feast of the Revelation. What they're doing is celebrating the time when uh, God gave the Torah uh, to the Jewish people, the Revelation. And they, uh, they were required to come to the temple, and many of them were there. They were there to celebrate this Jewish holy day. Now, probably these people from out, uh, around, uh, uh, outside of Judea and Galilee, they, most of them had not heard of Jesus, or if they had, they'd heard the bad things that the Pharisees were saying about Jesus. Probably very few had ever seen Jesus. Very fewer still had heard Jesus speak. Probably fewer still had ever seen a miracle, uh, not been in his presence. None of them were at the Last Supper, and none of them you know, were at the washing of the feet, and none of them interacted with the risen Jesus. But these were um, you know, Jewish men in the temple, and they were there to celebrate a Jewish holy day. They were not there to be converted or changed to a new relationship with God. They were not there. These uh, uh, Jewish people were not there uh, with the intent of being the first converts to the Christian church. Think about that. They were not there to be with the intent of being converts to the Christian church. But the Bible tells us that 3,000 of them were changed immediately. They were converted and beginning new lives as followers of Christ almost immediately. There's nothing ordinary about Pentecost. There's nothing ordinary. That was indeed a miracle that, well, and now how did this happen? Well, very simply, enabled by the Holy Spirit, Peter gave a very effective, a very short sermon. If you read it, it's very, very short, but it's effective, pointing out that Jesus was the manifestation of the prophecies made by David and others. 
And his very final line was kind of the thing. He says, God made him, talking about Jesus, God made Jesus both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. And after he said that, these 3,000 said, well, how, how can we become followers? How can we, how can we be saved? And Peter continues, they must repent. But, you know, now it's one thing to believe, you know, that Jesus was born in the incarnation. It was one thing to believe that Jesus was resurrected at Easter. But the lesson of, of Pentecost is that to be a follower of Jesus, you must accept Jesus as your Lord and Christ. Accepting Jesus as your Lord and Christ. So for that, we'll say thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.